So these guys watch him and trap him in verse 12. Uh, they came near and spoke before the king concerning the decree. And they said, didn't you say this? This is the thing about the devil. He puts the words in your mouth first. And then he makes you, held you accountable for what you said. But they originated from him. Be wise as serpents, harmless as dove. The devil will program your mouth so he can set you up to use it against you. That's twisting, that's Leviathan. Very important nugget if you want to survive in this warfare that the days we're headed for. So they tell the king, this is the law, you signed it. Oh my. Then they bring it up and grind him with it a little bit, you know. He's in trouble. He knows he's in trouble because he loves Daniel and he knows Daniel's the right man. He just, isn't it amazing how you got to keep the law to your own hurt and trust God? You ever had to do that? I have. Keep the law to your own hurt and trust that God's going to give you victory over the people that are trying to kill you. Whether it's in business or wherever. In other words, you can get trapped into obeying the law and look like you're going to die And God will display his power for you. See, most of us would try to find a way to do something else. But Daniel understood because he knew God would deliver him. And even if he didn't, he wasn't about to switch. I love this king, man. I, I mean, I realize he militarily took over Babylon. But verse 14. Then the king, when he heard those words was sore displeased with himself. It dawned on him he'd been had. He knew it. And he knew they used his authority against him, him and the man he wanted to promote. He was trapped by his own power and authority. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Trapped by your own words that were installed Made, bought something you didn't want to buy, did something you didn't want to do, got talked into something you didn't want, signed a contract you should have never signed. He was displeased with himself and he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till going down of the sun to deliver him. Then the, those men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, now, or know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. They're going to remind him again. How do you like that? So the king obeys his own words. He keeps his word. This is the way God is. You know that, right? He keeps his word to his own hurt. All this is a reflection of God. And Jesus and the ways of God. God kept, I figure when it come time to send Jesus to the earth, he wasn't exactly happy about it, but he was going to keep his word because he said he'd send a deliverer in Genesis. Then the king commanded that they had brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now this guy, this guy's got to do what he don't want to do. And he don't know Daniel's God, but he prays through Daniel because he knows he doesn't know his God. I love this guy. He knows he don't know, and he's willing to do whatever he got to do to make it work. Now the king spoke and said unto Daniel, thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver you. He will deliver thee. Shh, what, a, what a great prayer for a guy who didn't know God very well. But he knows Daniel knows him. And uh, and. A stone was brought and laid at the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet. This guy's he's keeping his own word to his own hurt. With the signet of his lords, and the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. This is what's great. This shows you the king's character again. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were there any instruments of music brought before him and, he, and his sleep went from him. You know what I think that was so great about this man? Under pressure, sometimes I like to check out. He didn't let himself be entertained 
because he wanted to check out. He faced his decision with his eyes open and knew he was wrong. How many times do we look for a diversion under pressure that we created and we try to find something to entertain us to take our mind off of it? He didn't, he didn't want no music. He wanted to be focused on what he did and what needed done to get this man out. Praying that God would deliver him. He didn't check out. He, yeah, he arose very early in the morning and went in haste into the lion's den. And obviously when he came, he cried in a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spoke and said to Daniel, Daniel, O Daniel, is thy God in whom thou serve continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Now look, this character of Daniel, oh my. See, I, I just, I've always loved Daniel and I've always loved Joseph because they could live and be violated and never fight back. If you can do that, God can fight for you. If you can't, God can't fight for you. Then Daniel said unto the king, Oh, live forever. He still got a right attitude. He knew the king put him in there, and he knew the king got trapped, but he didn't hold it against the king. He didn't fight humanity, he appealed to divinity for his deliverance. You talk about the right focus. Did not blame anybody. Appealed to God for help. My God has sent his angel and has shut the mouths of the lions that they have no hurt. They have not hurt me. For as much as before him uh, I can't see. My tears were not my eyes. Really okay. Much before men could see was found in me and also before thy king I have done no hurt. In other words, I'm innocent. Innocency is in me. And I've not harmed you, king. And God has delivered me. God. Sometimes you may face things where you have no legal or political way out or you may have faced things that you made errors and got trapped that's not the time to be angry and blame people it's a time to appeal to God then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken out of the den, and no matter of hurt was found on him, because he believed in his God. Amen. Now remember his name. Yeah. How you like that? Do you think God named him right? Oh yeah, that is great. That means before you know he before you were in your mother's womb, he knew you. See, I get excited about that because God had this destiny for everybody in this place. But I will tell you this: you'll never get it through compromise or the opinions of people. If you're still striving to, striving to make people like you, you'll miss your destiny. I didn't say go pick a fight with them. They'll come, don't worry. You don't have to pick no fight. I didn't say talk bad about them. I didn't say fight with them. But you don't have to have their approval. If you get their approval, you probably won't make it. You know, in a generation that's been abandoned, they all want approval so bad because their dads left them. But they're wanting that approval is their biggest enemy. That's why if you, if you got a hole, the big hole in you, in the name of Jesus, let God heal you so you don't chase rainbows all your life trying to get something that you're not supposed to have so you can become a strong person and live without it and accomplish his will. I said a mouthful there if you're listening. If you're still stuck on how people treat you, you're not going to get there. In this world, you will have tribulation. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. 
You'll never get the approval. God has to let you do without the approval because if he gave it to you, you wouldn't change. You'd be stuck. So he has to hold back the appraises of men. I think it's in Proverbs it says that God uses the praises of men to test you. When you get praise, it's a test. It's a test to see if you'll respond to praise instead of to purpose. If you need too much praise, you're being tested to be, to, so you can find out what you're being led by. You thought you were supposed to get the approval of all them people. How could you be who you are when you're trying to be what they want you to be? That's right. Amen. Well, you know what happens next? <laughs> Strong stuff now. Strong stuff. <coughs> and the king commanded and saying, the, com the king commanded and they brought those men which accused Daniel and cast them into the lion's den. And their children and their wives. Strong stuff, isn't it? And the lions had mastery of them and broke all their bones into pieces wherever they came at the bottom. Before they hit the bottom, they were already being devoured. Now you remember, what happened to Korah when he rebelled against Moses was very similar. Whoosh, earth opened up, all their families and their belongings fell in. See, that's why when people tell me it only affects me, you know, I'm not hurting nobody, I almost want to say, you ain't got any sense at all. If you think you're doing wrong doesn't affect your, everybody around you, you've lost your mind. How can you say that? Because it permeates everybody that's around you. So, his enemies, this is, this is the, I really believe this with my heart. The only reason that God could do that with Daniel and Joseph was because they left it up to God and didn't touch it. They stayed away from it with the longest pole you can have, not to have their own vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith God. They knew better than to say one thing against the satraps, against the governors, against the king. What a great man Daniel really was. No wonder he had his high position. He was objective and didn't pick on people and make it a carnal fight. He was a perfect leader for that. He could go through a skirmish and not blame folk. My God. And God, see, if God, if he'd have said, God, kill him, then he would have felt like he killed him if they did die. Could you imagine the guilt? But when he just backed up, didn't touch it. He never touched it. Even in the beginning, he didn't touch it in Daniel 1, 2, and 3. He knew better than to get involved with the carnal part of a fight. He backs out, obeys God. If he dies, he dies. And guess who vindicated him? God. See, it's a certain attitude that gives God the atmosphere and the avenue to, to vindicate you. If you vindicate yourself, he can't get in. But if you just get out of the way and say, Father, I'm so grateful that you saved me. I'm so thankful that I'm still here. I believe you'll deliver me, Lord, but if you don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna thank you for the years I got. you just given God an avenue to save your life. But if you fight your own fights, how can he fight for you? We were seeing God is fighting for his people. God is fighting for his people. God is fighting for his people today. That's because they let him. God, even in the Old Testament, Israel would come up against enemies and he'd whittle it down to 300. So he could fight. He used to tell him to do stuff, then he'd go fight. He said, in, in your finances, he says, I'll rebuke the devourer for you, myself. 
all the devouring that goes on in your finances, when you obey God, he just says, I get between you and that problem. I'm, I'll get between you and that devourer. I will be the devourer for you. God likes fighting for you, but we always don't, we always are so, please forgive me. This is not, we're so touchy and so wounded that everything is, you, 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 you did that, you did that, you did that. I'm thinking, look shout about high. Come on, man, let God in there somewhere. Shut up. <laughs> if you keep rattling about all the violations, how can God fix any of them? But he sure took care of Daniel. And after all them years, he sure made Joseph's brothers square up. God will make everybody square up. And if they won't, it still ain't your business. Our job is not to try to make things happen that we want to happen, even if it is the will of God. He didn't ask for vindication. God did it for him. His name was enough. God is my judge. His name said the battle plan. God is my judge. I think that's wonderful. Makes your name want to be Daniel, doesn't it? <laughs> Amen. God fight for you. Without Daniel asking the king, his enemies were removed. Verse 25, 625. Then the king, Dendarius, wrote unto the people, all the people, nations, and languages. Think this guy had some influence? See, if God puts you in a place of influence and you're too carnal, he can't get it done. If Daniel would have flaked out and start fighting people, he couldn't have got this far to change the law. Shut up, I tell you. Have my. That dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree. Now this is the guy who can say something and it's written and it's stuck. That in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Legislation was changed because Daniel could zip it and let God do it and go through it and see what happens. For he is the living God and steadfast forever in his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivers, he rescues, he works signs and wonders in heaven and earth who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Now, I'm going to go back up just a little bit and then I'm going to close. When God changes your season and you look like you're stripped of your position and your name, it means he's going to do something new. Amen. You didn't lose your power. You didn't lose your status. You got a different assignment. Don't try to say the former days were better and try to move into the next phase that God has for you. Let's stand to our feet this morning. I encourage you this morning to remember that you are not wrestling flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness. If you can train yourself, I think it takes a while. I'm not out of the woods, but I'm getting closer than I've ever been to not addressing people and addressing God and the devil. I petition God now. Boy, I've wanted to change people. I've, oh my, my temperament is high choleric. It's a good thing I got saved because we'd change society, all right. The point is, it's taken 30 years and I haven't gotten it done, but I'm just better than I was a while back. I want my eyes open. I want to see where I'm going. I want the word to light my path and be a lamp. 
I encourage you today. I, I really believe with my whole heart if you was ever going to get right with God and get rid of stubbornness, rebellion, stiff-neckedness, now's the time. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's a lot of time. And I don't mean like Jesus is coming back. I'm telling you that if you don't, you won't be in the right position to be safe in what's coming on the earth. That's what I'm telling you. There's a big difference. Now, I'll say that a different way so you understand. There are things coming on the earth that the only place, safe place to be is in his will. If you're not in his will, I do not believe it'll be as safe for you as to somebody who is. Daniel was safer in the lion's den than he was in the palace because he was in the will of God. Your head will tell you you're not safe, but I'm telling you, you're gonna have to come against your carnal mind and obey the word to be safe in the days to come. Like Daniel, you'll be safer when what looks like you've been trapped than you would be if you defended yourself. It's called trust. Now you have to work that out. Only God knows you intricately enough. I can preach it, but I, everybody's at their own deal. You know what I mean? You, you gotta work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and know that you are being true to your spirit and not your head. They that know their God will be strong and do exploits. It's in knowing God that your safety is I think whatever you gotta do to get to know God, whether it's the praying or, or sitting or sometimes just not listening to your own head. I say this, you know, and it sounds almost crazy if, if you don't know. I always say don't think as much as obey. And I, I had people in the automobile business teach me that I didn't know. You know, when you're young, I always say this. When you're young, you know everything, and then you find out you don't know anything. So when I was young, I thought I knew, and they let me make all them mistakes and watched me. And then they would say, now, are you ready so you can eat? Are you ready to learn something so you can feed your family, or do you just want to be right? I mean, that's the way they talk to you. You could do that in that world. It's hard to do in a church world. Nobody could take it. But in a real world where there's businesses and prophets, they say anything because it really doesn't matter. They have to. And I, I actually personally prefer that environment because I like all the stuff gone so I can learn. I like all the, the cream off the coffee so I can see it. So... They, they, God set me in an environment where I had to break to eat. Hallelujah. He taught me to obey by need. Now, I know that's a pretty low form, but I took it, and I, I'll take it. I'll take it. If it's what he had, he did it with the desert, and he said, eat this today, don't take no more, it'll rot. And then tomorrow they took it and it rotted. So God does put you in a place of manna, daily manna, to train you. Now, most people hate that because you've got to be humble to say, I, I can only take care of myself for one day at a time. <laughs> it don't feel very successful. But in the long run, he can trust you. That king could trust Daniel. He was going to set him over the whole place because of that character trait. But he lived one day at a time and didn't deny God. I, I'm going to pray for you this morning. And I want you to ask God about what you need to do. I don't claim to know what you need to do. Father, this morning, first of all, thank you that we can gather in this building, that we have a building to gather in, that we have a body to sit in, because someday, God, it won't even be fit to sit in. We'll get evicted. So I thank you it's healthy and working right now. I thank you that the will of God will be done in our life. We will yield to truth. Father, take us into a place where we don't lie to ourselves. Let's help us be like the king and admit it and not entertain our way out of the truth. To not diversion our way out of what's going on. Let us face the issues so we can have the solutions and the courage to move on in life and not be stuck. Father, protect us from evil. Just like you did, Daniel, if we have things to face, I thank you that we will be protected and provided for even what looks like sudden death, God. Father, I pray health over everybody's body this morning. 
I rebuke every sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. We decree, say this with me, I decree, I declare health over my body, sickness and disease go from my body. I receive healing today, mental health today, right position today, right standing with God today, and the wicked one does not touch me in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. We're going to give an opportunity for somebody to get saved if they're going to use this for video. You might as well get every itch, right? So we're going to pray for somebody out there on camera that wants to be saved this morning or wants to get some things, maybe recommitted. Father, I come in the name of Jesus. I repent of my sin. I rededicate this morning. I thank you, God, that you didn't forget about me. I left you, but you didn't leave me. Thank you for your faithfulness. God help me get grounded again in the kingdom. Father, I give you praise and honor this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you were watching us by live stream, I hope you benefited. We pray that you benefited. We want to do ministry today to touch you. I believe God had a word for you this morning. So I thank you for watching. I pray that you got something from God today. My God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you uh, are visit, obviously if you're visiting or not, there's coffee. We're indoors now. I miss being outdoors, to be honest with you. <laughs>